right. Hello, everybody. So, uh, yeah, you can catch, catch up with me here at LinkedIn. It's the only social thing I do, really. There's no Facebook or, link, or you know, LinkedIn's pretty much it. That's, that's the, the place to do it. And if I look nervous, it's because I am. So, you know, I, um, I'll do my introduction. Uh, I used to be an MCT, kind of alumni now. I worked for DDLS. Uh, for 10 years training. So you think I'd be pretty comfortable with this sort of thing, but it never, that's always nervous, you'll see anyway. And I, I left there six months ago and uh, have been working at DWS uh, as a senior cloud consultant. So I look after Azure, Office 365, anything cloud related. Uh, I don't delve into AWS or anything like that yet, but that's what I do. Um, so that's my first slide, it's a bit hard to see, but Look, I tried to get a little bit more fancy with my PowerPoint slides. I don't like death by PowerPoint and just, you know, smashing it with heaps of text. So I'm going to try this method. Uh, when I used to deliver, it was just tech, walls of text and stuff. So I'm going to do this. Too many things. When, when I decided to call this Gather All The Things, that was like my working title. And Adam ran with it. And I'm like, oh, no, he's put it out there. It's cool. Yeah, it works. It's very kind of meme -y, you know. But the, the thing is, as an IT pro, as an admin, you're thrown all these new features and these new tools and, and, and new user products that you've got to deploy. And, and there's another one, you know? It's, it's too many things to manage. And uh, when we look at Office 365 and Microsoft's productivity suite, you've got uh, email, you've got SharePoint, you've got, you know, I'm going to go through all those soon, but you've just got all these different collaboration tools. Heard of Yammer? Like dealing with another tool? You know, it's, it gets a bit, a bit out of control. But, Looking at groups specifically, you've got a few alternatives in the Microsoft space. You may have heard of a shared mailbox. You might think, hang on, that might be a little bit like groups. And yeah, you're right, it is. You've got distribution lists, your classic distribution list. Pile a bunch of users in their email, they all get their emails, and then they all bounce them back and to and from, and you know, they're a mess as well. Public folders, yeah, they're not going away. I heard that they're, they're moving on further with those. And, you know, adding more support in Office 365 for public folders. Anyway, uh, and good old SharePoint team site. Another way to kind of collaborate and, and work together. They're my four, my top four inside of Microsoft's kind of productivity and, and collaboration. Where do groups fit in with that? It's, uh, I guess, the, the next. Oh, I've added a few more here. Your choices you've got shared mailboxes, public folders, team sites, Yammer, Teams. Where does it all end? This is the, the too many things that I talked about. This is like overwhelming, and I've got to manage all of this. And it's kind of like, uh, I've no idea what, what to do. Where do I go with this? You tell me to set this up. You tell me to manage it. it you know, I just like that picture. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so what do I need to do? Um, what did I need to do in the past? Create a distribution list, perhaps, or a shared mailbox? That might have been the answer to my collaboration problem. Distribution lists require you to create it, admins. You to manage the membership. They changed that a little bit in Exchange recently where users can manage their own distribution list, create their own. But I didn't see too many people using it because you know, the, the learning curve for that, for the end user, just isn't there. You know, it isn't, it's too much, too steep. Um, but anyway, you ended up manually controlling members. Shared mailboxes sound great, a single mailbox, but you've got to kind of set up everybody's outlook and again, train users how to use it. And, uh, I've used the shared mailboxes quite a lot in the past. I find them really useful. Um, but they have their problems, of course. Create a SharePoint site. Oof, don't get me started on that. Right, I want a team site. Let's start there. Yes, you can email to the, the lists within a team site. You've got discussion boards. You've got other... Uh, SharePoint team sites are just too much, I think. They're just... And too hard to manage and too much to customise to get it to work the way you want it to work. Well, maybe they're problems. Manually manage the membership of the SharePoint site and manually manage permissions of content. I don't know, I hope not. Groups take all of those other features, bring them together into a single box where you can tick a box and turn it on. And you can get the users to turn them on. So, um, how are you going to cope? You know, that, that
properly managed object called an Office 365 group. And we're going to learn what makes up one of these groups. I'm not going to hang around too long with these things. So what do we do with groups? They allow for collaboration. They're a tool for collaboration. Just keep that in mind. Don't ever move away from that. They are for the users to get together and do things. Get a job done. Get a project underway. Look after a customer. Talk amongst themselves for a social group, a social activity group. Lots of cool things you can do with them. They're for collaboration. And everything you need for that collaboration is created in one simple, simple step. Um, simplified control of permissions and membership within these things. This means that when the group is created, the end users can say who wants to be in here, invite others, discover the groups. There's another feature in, there's another Microsoft product that, that has a similar sort of um, approach. And you may not have seen it, but it was, uh, oh God, I forget the name of it now. It, it was a part of um, SharePoint. Uh, Skype for Business on-premises. Uh, persistent persistent chat. chat. Yeah, so it kind of has that kind of feel to it, but that was very focused on IM. Groups are kind of, they have that kind of feel to them. So anyone can join, you can make them public and private, we'll look at that later. So new members can be added easily, uh, it's controlled by the creator, you've got a, a simple all-in-one package for teamwork, I keep saying that, that's kind of given. But it's integrated with a lot of other Office 365 features. So one is Skype for Business. There is an integration with that. Your Office applications, there's integration with that. You know, saving and, and opening files from within those applications. And you know, I don't want to turn this talk really into a user presentation. If I was doing that, I'd do it at a customer site and give them this. But this is all about IT pros. This is the next slide. Don't you mean the team site? Is that what we're really building here? And in a way, you are. There's several ways to look at groups, uh, Office 365 groups. At the heart of them, yeah, there is a team site. It's a SharePoint site that's kind of hidden and stores all of the resources. But there's a few other components that are a part of it as well. So it's not just a team site. But you know what? That, at the heart of it, that's what it is. Here's the building blocks. And I stole this from. AvPoint's website or something like that, so don't tell them. I was going to build it myself. Um, so these are like the client applications that integrate, that, that interact with Office 365 and what you'd expect the users to be using. Outlook, of course, you know, that's email and you've got groups access from Outlook. You can create new groups. You can manage the group memberships from Outlook itself and from OWA, so the Office web app. Uh, OneDrive gives you access to the files that are in the SharePoint team site. So there are files that are a part of your group. How do I get them? Well, use OneDrive to sync them back and forth to your desktops and other devices or you know, even to your phone. OneNote, I'm a big user of OneNote. And with each new group, you get, another, you get a OneNote. And the members of the group can all contribute to that OneNote, creating pages and folders and all that sort of stuff inside. A shared calendar for everybody. The Skype integration is very minimal. All I found in there was that if you've got the Skype for Business desktop app installed and you do a search for people, the groups will appear. As so you can pick one of those groups and if there's 20 members inside that group, you start a group chat instantly from there. That's really cool. So your team has a big presentation coming up on Friday. Skype, grab the group, start a chat. Everybody who's present and available will be in that chat. Just makes life easier. There is some integration with Dynamics. You can create projects from within Dynamics, and they build groups. So there's kind of a project um, group inside of Dynamics CRM. And when you do create it, it creates an actual Office 365 group. Um, Delve, we won't get into that here, but uh, Yammer, there is some link between Office 365 groups and Yammer. When you build a Yammer, you can choose whether to store the uh, the resources for your Yammer group in an Office 365 group. And that was only a recent addition as well. And Teams, oh, when you create a team, it builds a group for you. So you can start to see a bit of a, a theme running here. When you build one of these other objects in Office 365, the group is now this kind of foundational object that provides the storage, the communication, the notes, all those kind of resources that you might have around them. So my next for you if this is the way you're going to play it. Let the users manage the groups. Then I have to come to you and say I need a distribution list. You want to create it yourself. Create a group. 
all right? And it's not difficult for them to create groups. They'll find the links in various places if they're using Office on, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Office Web App, in their mail application, they'll see a groups icon and click it and create a new group and they'll see it in Outlook, they'll see it in, uh, in SharePoint. And so yes, let them go and create it, you can disable it though. And that's because popping up all over the place. You might see that same problem with groups. It's up to you guys to, to look at it from the higher level and go, how many are being created? How many aren't being used? And so there are tools for you to, to manage that stuff. Anyone can create a group, so you need to control it, of course. You can control who can create groups, but that control is all done through PowerShell at the moment, not through the uh, Office 365 Admin Center. So don't let it get out of hand, and uh, you can manage who creates groups. If you do grab the slides, if they're making the slides available, I've got links in the slide notes for places to go to do some of these things. So it's worth just kind of going through the slide notes to see See what I mean by, you know, without limiting it, but what are the limits? So, uh, a user can create up to 250 groups on their own. Uh, they get to that limit, they can't create any more, but that's plenty, yeah? But there's no limits for administrators. You can have up to 500,000 per tenant. Just simple figures here, nothing too ex exciting. The storage limit is really a part of SharePoint. Remember I said it's all stored in SharePoint. So do you have 25 gig available in 25 terabytes available in SharePoint? That's what you can store in there. So it's based on the SharePoint limit. So go to your SharePoint admin page in Office 365 and see what you got left there. That's what that's about. You can set limits on the groups, but only after they're created. That's a kind of limitation at the moment. That might change in the future, we'll see. Um, but I think Microsoft are taking the, the approach that we want to make them as simple as possible. Tick a box, click a button, you got a group. Not too many options and buttons. If you went new group, please, and there was like a two pages of switches and buttons to choose before you get it, the users won't use it. Uh, so that's what that's about. It's not a security group. Remember that. You cannot use the groups for security. You're probably familiar with you know, security, ver security groups versus distribution groups in Active Directory. Um, these are distribution lists, in effect. They do not carry any security SIDs or anything like that. Um, and I think I also said that there was fairly limited management, and especially at the moment. You know, a lot of the stuff you have to do with these is with PowerShell. There's a lot of things you can't do with it, so you can go and explore those. Again, there's some links in the... It's got everything going on, you know. Um, what he ha has horns everywhere, and uh, the little the thing I remember was that Ariel has the red ball on the top. Every car should have one of those. That was the joke. Um, so conversations, these are, these are achieved through Exchange. So Exchange provides the conversations inside of groups. If you want to, uh, you know, it's like a discussion list or a, uh, yeah, like a discussion in SharePoint, how you can have a threaded conversation. Well, Groups provides that, and it is Exchange that is providing the storage for the conversation. That's the important thing to remember here. Remember SharePoint was storing pretty much everything else, but the actual conversation is really like email. And Groups are an email group. You can email it, it has an email address, there's storage for email, and so on. The calendar, well, that's the other thing. That's, uh, that's stored in SharePoint, all right? OneNote, you get a OneNote book to, to share notes and, and so on. Like I said, I'm a big fan of that, and that's another important part of this. A document library to store information. Which you get a full site, you get a SharePoint site, but you get this one document library that's kind of a part of it and, and is visible and, and made available. And yeah, of course, you get a SharePoint team site along with this as well. Got some more notes here, what have I got? Anything else? Yeah, it's a fully functioning team site, fully functioning SharePoint. Yeah, it's oh, cool. Okay, so we're not, we're not going crazy. All right, restoring deleted groups is something that you can do. You've got to use Active Directory, Azure Active Directory PowerShell command lets to do it though. All right, so it is possible to restore a group that you deleted and everything about that group comes back within retention periods, of course. Uh, there are retention policies. These are a part of the security and compliance within 
Office 365, where you can say, I want to keep stuff for seven years, I want to keep stuff, blah, blah, blah. It supports retention policies because, you know, these the features and the, and the files within Office 365 groups are all a part of Office 365. And they're all... Label management is also related to compliance in that we can um, create these things called labels, apply them to the content, and delete them after so much time. All right, so that's what the labels are all about. They're about retention policies. They're about managing the content. Guest access, you can invite anybody. Someone with a Gmail account, someone with a, you know, a, a Yahoo account. Now, they will receive kind of correspondence in the group. They'll receive emails. But to give them access to the actual files, they'll have to follow a link and sign up for a, an account. And that account will get stored in your Azure AD. And you can manage it there. Uh, upgradable distribution groups. So if you've got a lot of distribution groups, it's a kind of a one touch to upgrade them if you want to. And you'll see that if you've wandered through the Office 365 group management, um, you will see this button that says upgrade. And I might show you that in a minute in the demo. Uh, data classification. What have I got for the usage guidelines? What did I put that there? Yeah, usage guidelines is a URL that you can add to the groups. So when you create the group, you can add a URL. If you create them with PowerShell, there's a whole heap of attributes. And one of them is a URL to get help. Uh, dynamic men membership. So based on a query, you can add membership to the groups. That was added recently. Uh, group activity reports. So if you've ever been to Office 365 Console, you know you've got activity reporting in there and, and the amount of space that's being used and all of that. Groups have been added to that as well. And connectors. Connectors are kind of cool. I've got an example for connectors a little later. All right. One of the important choices that a user will get when they create a group is to make it public or private. The default is public, but it's not public in the sense of internet public. It's public in the sense of your organisation and your Office 365 tenant. So it's made public, users can go and browse for the group and then ask to join or join it, they don't have to ask. Um, for private groups, they won't be able to just simply find them and they'll have to ask to join or be joined by someone else. If you've got a private group, only people in that group can email the group? Is that, if you're external to the group, can you email? That's just an option. You can email it yep. if that option is, is on. Okay. It's like a distribution. So separate to the private and public. Yeah. So it's like a distribution list. You can say, are outside people allowed to email this? Yep. And if that's on, then they can email it. But I, I did read somewhere that all groups are available in the global address list by default as well. So that kind of makes them all public by default. They are all visible in the GAL. Uh, but you've got an option to hide from global address list as well. So yeah, there's a few things I think that they need to work out. So they call you a group project selling the company or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there, there might be that case. I did read somewhere that it doesn't matter what you do, they're in the GAL and they're, you know, they're viewable. It's not like they're super hidden. But in the general kind of user searching, so you're in Outlook Web Access and you're searching for groups because you can kind of browse for them, they won't appear unless they're public. And uh, I talked about guest invites. Um, oh, can be shared with external people and you can control that, whether users are allowed to share the content with external people. Um, and you can invite guests from outside the organisation. So essentially, when you add a new member, you've got like an invite option. And if you plug in an, an email address that is not a part of your tenant, an invite will go out to the user, the, the person you emailed, and they'll get a little link and follow the link, and they'll have access if they sign up through that access link. Mm, okay. um, that's how you create one from Outlook. You would have noticed this kind of groups area. You can see, oh, I've left a couple of our customers in here. But uh, anyway, that's all right. Might have to clean that up a bit. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, so from OWA you can create them and from the Office 365 admin. There's also a, a phone app. There's a dedicated Office 365 groups phone app um, that I've got a screenshot of that here as well somewhere. So management. How do we manage it? First of all, the Office 365 Admin Center, and again, I'll take you through these, and I'll show you, I've got a little kind of guided step-by-step -step demo thing that I'll go through, and it'll cover all of these, most of these. I'm not gonna show you the mobile app, but I've got a screenshot. 
From the Office 365 Admin Centre, you've got groups where you can manage distribution list groups or security groups and the whole lot, but Office 365 groups are there as well. And they're kind of encouraging you to create these as opposed to other types at this point. So that's like the default. If you create a new group in this console, it creates an Office 365 group. The mobile app gives you that kind of ability as well to create groups. You've got the Azure AD Admin Portal as well. So that shows you the groups. So if you go to the Azure AD Admin, so the Azure portal and look at the user and group management in there, you'll see the, uh, the groups in there and the group memberships in there and you can control them. The Exchange Admin Console gives you access to these as well. Because at the end of the day, they're really just a, an exchange object, all right, linked to an Azure AD object. And you can kind of delete them from there and manage them from there as well. In fact, that's where you'll see the uh, button to upgrade distribution lists to Office 365 groups. PowerShell, of course, and a little PowerShell demo control. I don't know, that's probably a... I don't know what I've done there. Control? Yeah, okay. One of the interesting things uh, is you've got naming policies. You've got naming policies for distribution lists in Office 365, and they apply to Office 365 groups as well. So you can have a prefix or a suffix um, on your group name, and the users don't have any control of that. So if any user creates a group, it'll have that prefix or suffix loaded onto it. Oh, postfix, I called it there. Uh, creation restrictions, so you can decide who, want, who you will allow to create the groups. PowerShell to do that, unfortunately. We've got uh, dynamic memberships. Some of these things require um, Azure AD Premium to, to make happen, though. So you have to have that level access. Guest access. Uh, remember, we could either allow guest access or not allow guest access. So just pointing that out here. You, I mean, the, the next point about send as, the groups are actual Exchange recipients. So if you know anything about Exchange, there's this object called a recipient, and it kind of, it's like an umbrella term for anything that's got an email address in Exchange, a recipient, a contact, a, um, a public folder can be a recipient. So Office 365 groups are recipients as well. They are a special type of mailbox within the Exchange Online environment called a group mailbox, or sometimes called, well, in PowerShell, they refer to it as a unified um, group. And so they are a container inside of Exchange Online and they're a recipient. So as a recipient, they have pretty much all the other settings that any recipient has. And that is kind of you can control send as. Allow others in the organization to send as that group. Or you can put mail tips on them if you want to. Just as another example because it's a recipient. Um, you can add quotas and... Uh, Oh, quotas to the SharePoint site itself. So that's another thing you might want to do as far as management goes. Restrict the amount of data that can be stored inside of the group's team site. And going back to the fact that your object is a recipient and a container inside of Exchange, you can put restrictions on the size of it as well. It has limits that you can add, just like a map. Uh, alias. So those are three common kind of PowerShell commands. And to use these, uh, which module do you think you're using? If you're familiar with PowerShell, what module would you be using to use these? You know, know what I mean by module? Is it SharePoint module? Is it Office 3? The MSOL module? It's not MSOL because normally they have that little prefix, don't they? If you've used PowerShell with Office 365. What's the prefix for these? Well, it looks like unified. No, this is the noun. It's not a prefix. There's only other, one other, there's only one PowerShell module that I know that does not have a prefix. 
It's exchange. It has no prefixes because it was the first. <laughs> yeah. And so these are exchange commandments. Exchange online. So how do we get to exchange online? We have to connect to it. I'll do that in a moment. So they're exchange commandments. I just thought that was interesting and fascinating, of course. Duplicate. That's probably what happened there. All right, so there is migration options for public folders. I guess they're encouraging you to do this. This is a fairly new feature as well. So they've got like a, a migration path from public folders if you're using them. You could choose which public folders you want to become groups. And uh, it um, turn, uh, uploads all the data into groups. And uh, that's the link to that. I won't go through a demo, but it's just kind of a nice feature if you're going to be migrating away from public folders, which you might be using for this sort of thing. Logged on to Office 365 back here somewhere, yeah, right? And I'm going to head into the mail, first of all, just to show you that uh, in a lot of ways this will be the starting point. There's no groups console, you know, there's no, a lot of people will probably go in here and go, where's my groups button? There's no groups button. It's not the way they work. So groups are, uh, I don't know, they, they kind of sit everywhere. They don't have a specific console to manage them, except on the iPhone app, I don't know. Anyway, so there's the uh, OWA, and down here we've got groups. You see I've got a couple of groups going on here. Um, there's a demo group, I went in, oh, it's just one little object in there, we'll let this load for a moment. But I'll go and create one. Okay, now let's go hit the plus button. The plus button. Okay, you see, it's not working. Oh, there it is, right. So we get a little panel on the side. For us to add our group name. What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it App Services. I don't know. App Support, I think, is what I was going to use. Just giving you a bit of an idea of why you might use this. So we've got an application with a group of people supporting it. We need a place where we can communicate and look after this application. We might want to store some files. Uh, we might want to communicate and email. We might want to use a OneNote. And notice it's gone and said, hey, that's available. Now, it's interesting that it's used this domain name here. I know that's just a made up one, it's a demo, <coughs> you know, a trial version of Office 365 that I've set up pretty much exclusively for what we're doing here. Um, and I don't have any alternate uh, domain suffix associated with Office 365. So what suffix will it use? Well, it'll use the default suffix for your tenant. So when you go into the tenant and you add new domain names to it, the default one is what will be used here. You don't get a choice. Well, at least the end user won't get a choice. Um, it's an interesting, I guess, dilemma. What if I want it to be something else? Well, change the default, or you can change it later. And I'm got, I've got a demo where I changed the email address. It's just this one little thing. And I actually had this problem with the group I was using. I wanted to change the email address of it and found out you can only do it through PowerShell. So that's what I'm going to call it. Put in the description, you know, app support. And oh, that's where you get to, get to choose public or private. And I explain what they're about. I'm going to leave this one as public. And send a copy of all group conversations and events to, uh, to members inboxes. They can choose whether they want these or not later down the track or I can leave this off and no one will get anything. Let's go turn that on. And under more options, just language settings, I think, yeah. So that's it. Okay, little demo on creating one. Not too, not too hard, not too difficult. Um, adding members, yeah, I've got a couple of users in here. I've got a Sarah. I'll go and add Sarah to it. And, and done. And so she'll get like a notification that's been added and there's my group. Okay, and then we're looking at the group from within OWA. You get a different view depending on the application you're looking at it through. Uh, but at the top, you've got some broad categories here, conversations, files, calendars, notebook. And my experience is that these take a little while to kind of get moving once you've built it. So it's not very demo friendly. So I'm going to go down to the demo that I created earlier because it's kind of got a bit of content in it already. There's the conversations, new conversation, pretty straightforward, reply. But a lot more like a discussion board than email. But you know, in the back end, it's, it's using email to store these and manage them. Files. This can confuse some users. They might have created a file a while ago. It's not in the list. Why is this one at the top? Why is that one at the bottom? This is kind of a summary of recent files, this list. 
and they're flattened too. So you might say, hang on a minute, I put this one inside of a folder. Why is it just sitting here? It's because it's flattened, it's recent ones. And there's also very limited management of them from this perspective. Okay, so you can see that, well, I can download, I can email, I can view it. If you've used SharePoint before, you'll know you've got a lot of other options when it comes to files. Where are those other options? Oh, we'll get to that. There's a calendar. And it will merge the calendar with your local calendar. You know, just that's a nice little touch and you can add other calendars. It's kind of, I added a meetup. Um, event in here and it's in both calendars. Notebook. So this will open up OneNote where I've added a little bit of a scroll and added a couple pages. You can of course open this OneNote file up in the full OneNote and I prefer the full OneNote. Got the pen and all that sort of stuff to, to use. So that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Under here you've got Planner and you've got the site. So the site is the team site that underlies this group. So we could go there we just should open up another tab, we'll take a quick look at that. And it's from here that you can see the documents, which is the, the storage for files. You can see those three files. And, and look, there's an email attachments folder and yeah, anyway, come back. You can modify the team site, you can you know, change this home page. And it is a full team site, so you've got pages to add, you can create a wiki, you can create all of the objects that we create in SharePoint. It is a team site, it's yours to play with. You've got management of membership up here. Let's go back, 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 back here. So what are the, uh, where are we going to go next? Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to look at all the user-based stuff. I want to focus more on some of the administration side of things. So over here, you've got membership. So members, you can edit the group. And you've got the simple management of the group there. Not, not heaps of, you know, switches and buttons, just very few. Change the uh, picture of it here. Let people outside the organization email it. That's the link there. Uh, send a copy of all group, and that's what we were asked when we first created it. Do we want to send a copy of emails to everybody? And we can manage that there. As an individual, you can choose whether you want to subscribe as well. So it's all about controlling what you get and how many emails you get flooded with or not flooded with. So it's all designed to be very simple. Uh, the next step is to head off into the more administrative area. So let's head off into admin. <coughs> Since time is getting away from us as that happens. Where's the admin tile? Damn it. They always move it, it seems. Yeah, to me, it's... It needs to be down the very bottom now. Uh, it seems like it uh, jumps around and around everywhere. Oh, I've got it over here too. No, I don't. Okay. So just briefly, let's go through group management within here. So you want to go to groups and <coughs> to, well, all right, you're going to ask me to log in again, are you? It's a problem. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, all right. I'll do that if you insist. Uh, if you insist, would you like to? No. Nah. And yeah, there's a few little tidy ups to do. <coughs> it's just a trial Office 365. I'm not going to go through those things. So we do what it wants us to do and sign in properly. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, no, cancel. Groups. <coughs> Okay, there we go, new Office 365 group. You can see it defaults to Office 365 group. Now, if I did have multiple domains, I could select them here. So as an administrator, I can come and have a greater control over what the email address of the group will be. But yeah, I don't have one, so. Um, you can see the options that the user had are all here. Well, most of them are here. Selecting an owner to create a group. That's as far as we'll go through there. With groups as yes. well, just when worth mentioning, there's only two tiers. There's you're either a member or you're an owner. Yeah, that's if right. You have multiple owners to a group, but that's it. So you can't be any more granular on your control of the no. group than that. Yeah. Which is good for users because it's either are you part of it or do you run it? Yeah, it's interesting. Those those permissions are kind of right up the top of all those, uh, all of the resources within the group. You know, you've got a SharePoint site. The SharePoint site may have some sort of further granularity, but we're talking about the permissions that are at the top over everything, the mailbox, the OneNote, all that sort of thing. Uh, so next, um, we're going to go to the Exchange Admin Center, all right? But that's, that's another place we can go and look at groups and, and manage groups. This is where you'll find the Convert button. So if you've got distribution lists that you want to change to groups, you'll find them in here. Yeah, if it moves along fast enough, we'll do it. If not. Yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there. Okay, so we head to groups. 
Yeah, so here's the big button. Get started, upgrade your distribution groups. And of course, uh, Office 365 groups kind of prominent. It's, it's the default, it's like, well, we want you to use these instead of everything else now. Uh, that's the, yeah, upgrade one. And under this little, uh, parent, uh, what do they call it, uh, ellipses, you'll find the group name policy. If you haven't done this in Exchange, that's where you do it. So you choose a prefix and a suffix and, a, uh, and so on. And when you do this, new groups will immediately begin using it. So we'll go and add just text and uh, enter the text. There it is. Uh, we'll call this a user or user group or something with a, with a hyphen. And every new group that gets created will have that appended to the beginning or you know, added to the beginning. Might as well leave that there. Sounds like fun. Exchange admin center. Yeah, all right. So I think the next thing is the, the PowerShell. So and this is the last thing. So if you're, uh, if you're interested in eating pizza, this is where, this is where we finish. <laughs> so um, I have to log in to Exchange Online, as I said before. So we're entering a session. Exchange, the connection string here. Uh, first of all, just make sure that's off. Is that OK? Yeah? Yeah. It's your machine. Uh, I'm going to. No. Because <laughs> otherwise, the other stuff doesn't work. So many people use this PowerShell ISE to do PowerShell. Yeah, this is my number one tool. Something I learned recently is if you click on the line and press F8, it runs that line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. it's like I just didn't know, but if you hollow the sub, sub part of the line as well and get it. We could do a PowerShell line. session. There's heaps of cool stuff in PowerShell, especially the ISE. We could do a session on that, I reckon, at some point. Anybody, any volunteers? <laughs> I think I've said that for like the last four months. Yeah. Happy to do PowerShell. I'll do it soon. Learning PowerShell really is a journey though, you know. There's there's so much to it. There's so many little little quirky details that you'll learn along the way. So my, my credentials are in there. I'll go and uh, log into that session. And that, you can see exactly what I've done. One of my other favorite uh, features is that I just, uh, no, that didn't work, did it? OK, Outlook connecting remote server Outlook failed with the following error. Uh, access denied. So let me, let me add this again. On Microsoft.com. And um, type the password much slower. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk in type No, you can't. It doesn't work, does it? Uh, come on, you can do this. I just tested this on my machine, so. Um, if it all fails, I'll just I'll describe the, the code in front of us and I'll leave it at that. There we go, it worked. Great. So in we go, uh, import session. And that'll actually import all of the PowerShell commandlets into my session, allowing me to run you know, exchange commandlets. And that actually might take some time. So let's talk about a few things. Get unified group. And I was going to format it as a list. That'll show me all the ones I've got. And it will kind of spew them out onto the screen. Uh, I've got new, a unified group. And I'm going to give a display name demo one, but I've already got one of them. So we'll go demo two. And then I, uh, once it's created, I can use this command here to change its, its email address. Thank you. So yeah, getting, getting preemptive here. Let's go and uh, view all the groups. We'll just select and run. And you see it says F8, Adam mentioned. Yep, there we go. All right. But the other thing, uh, you just put the cursor anywhere on that line. Just put the cursor anywhere on that line and press F8. And uh, I don't know, function F8. We'll select and run. That'll save you some time too. So new unified group, demo two. Sounds like uh, a plan. Well, while that's running, uh, you can see all the details I pulled back after running that previous command. There's a lot of attributes related to groups. Um, I mentioned before, mail tips are in there. Uh, it's a group mailbox. That's the type of object it is. OK, so this one here will actually show me the address. So I've gone get unified group demo two. Show me the alias and the primary, uh, and that's just an asterisk because I'm lazy. It's going to show me primary SMTP address. So let's go. And so it'll go and construct one for me called demo2 at amjx. Whatever, but I wanted new demo2. So simply run that. 
change the, and like I said, this is the only place you can actually change it. You can't change it anywhere else. You've got to use PowerShell if you want to change that email address. And now when we go and run this, we should have the new email address um, listed. There you go, new demo too. End of demo. End of my session. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this Adelaide Microsoft IT Pro presentation. For more information on past or future events or to join the community, please visit the links below.